Welcome to Arc Idiotically Challenged. For the next 100 days, I will be suffering with a series of insane challenges. Every 10 days, there will be more challenges for me to agonize over. For example, the first 10 days will have one challenge, whereas the last 10 days will have 10 challenges. Not only that, but the wild dino levels double every 10 days. Now that I've got the basics covered, double check that you're subscribed and make sure to grab yourself a snack and a drink. Day one, I spawned in my new character. Yes, I am no longer black. When my new character was spawned in, I immediately found a glob of dodos. Slightly not worried at all, I went to punch the dodos to free them of their prison. I also wanted to punch a dodo. You can't really blame me for that. And after getting my fist covered in strawberry jam that isn't mine, I decided to recover them in strawberry jam that is mine by punching a tree. And this one was alive, so I had to unalive it. I decided to switch it up a bit. I usually punch a dead tree first, but I wanted to keep up the punching alive things for at least two things. Those two things being a dodo and a tree. Both were very much alive. Dodos won't be for long. Anyways, after I took the life sources from the tree, I started to rip the bushes from these plants and take their berries. Don't worry, according to vegans, plants aren't alive. So loss, I can't really effectively punch them anyways, so like, you know, eh, kinda gotta do with what I got, right? After that, I picked up a stone so I could craft my very first pickaxe. I'll call this pickaxe... Timmy. Timmy and I spent some time destroying and harvesting a few things so we could make more friends. Those friends consist of a hatchet, his name is Jeremy, a spear, whose name is Stabby, and a torch. His name is, uh, Torchy. Awesome names, I know. I also made a campfire. It doesn't get a name. Then I took Stabby to kill two dodos, and then I used Jeremy to harvest the corpses. They're already working together. It's like a perfect maid team from... Albuquerque? Now, when I get caught for murder, I'll be going into prison with friends. Yay! I used my campfire to begin cooking the newly harvested meat I won fair and square. While that's cooking, I became Raxray, and while that happened, Hirochi joined me. Then I began to cover myself with clothing. This clothing is full tech armor. Just don't look at my feet. Then it started raining, so I decided to murder more dodos. Did I harvest them? What do you, what do you mean, did I harvest them? Oh, also, I mentioned the dinosaur levels doubling every episode, but they start at, at level 45. This way, each episode, I'll have to get better dinos, and in the beginning, my dinos are gonna be suckier than, I don't know, 180? That makes sense. It should. Maybe. I don't know. I'm kind of an idiot. Anyways, I spent a minute burning the strawberry jam off of Stabby. Gotta clean the evidence, right? I was spending a while harvesting some river stones when all of a sudden, I lost Timmy. <laughs> oh, Timmy! Timmy 2. So now we have Timmy 2. I don't plan on living on this beach for too long, but I'll probably camp out here for a hot minute, if you know what I mean. So I made a thatch foundation and a mortar and pestle. But now I gotta wait 10 minutes for all the meat to spoil. So while it spoils, I'm gonna spoil you with today's sponsor. The like button. Yup, that's right. The sponsor is the like button. If you want to see a cool animation, go ahead and hit it. And while you're down there, you should click the subscribe button. This is my permanent deal, where you get two free confetti animations. Now that's cool. Oh hey look, the meat's spoiled. And we can make nine narcotics. Wow. So I harvested 30 bushes. I got 207 berries, so that's... 6.9 narco berries per bush. Nice. Then I turned them into 41 narcotics. Now I have a total of 50 narcotics. Epic. You know what else is epic? Today's sponsor. Um, sorry about him. Anyways, the day is now two, and we have all of our narcotics. Now, I unfortunately can't use them because I'm only level 15, but that just means we gotta level up. So I would kill more dodos, but it seems I've made them all go extinct. So I'll just have to kill trees. Oop, wait, oh, oh, nope, one respond. Okay, now they're extinct. Sorry, trees. And well, I killed one and then I became encumbered, so I used my 3000 IQ brain to make 39 storage boxes. Oh, I, for I forgot the decimal, my bad. <laughs> Anyways, now I have 39 storage boxes. What to do with 39 storage boxes? Oh, 
I've got an idea. I bet you don't have a throne made entirely out of storage boxes. And even after all that, I'm still one level away from 20. Well, I suppose I'll kill some turtles. And then I saw it, a red pig. So I tamed it. I named him Red Boy because he's red and he's a boy, duh. When I got back to base, I parked Red Boy and made a forge. While the metal was smelting, I made 266 arrows. Then I made a smithy. Using the smithy, I replaced Timmy and Jeremy. I will not be naming these metal fellers because I'm just too lazy. Feel free to name them in the comments below though. Below though, that rhyme. Why would I, why would I even put that in my notes? That's stupid. While day two was coming to an end, I went to harvest some more river stone. To speed up the smelting process, I made our current forge a brother. Or would it be a sister? Actually, let's make it both. He gets a brother and a sister. There we go. Now we have uh, Steve, Jessica, and A.A. Ron. Yeah, that's nice. Later in the day, I was harvesting more river stones. When out of nowhere, this rude piranha came and bit my ankles. I nearly made it out with my life let alone my ankles. Man didn't even pay for the OnlyFans subscription and he already got to bite my ankles, come on. This is crazy. I went to harvest one more stone and the piranha came back for round two. This time it brought a friend. I managed to dodge their attack and they just swam away. Hey, my toes is be in the water. Hey, why you running? Hey, why you running, coward? On the morning of day three, I made an elevator. Uh, you probably ask why, and I don't know why. All I can say is because I wanted to. And well, uh, it kind of doesn't work. So I had to tear it down. I rebuilt it, this time with a second floor to go to. Oh, cool, it works. Okay, but now I'm confused. What was the point of this? I guess this is to put Red Boy up there, maybe? Well, let me, well, let me dismount. Is this too heavy for you? Is this is Red Boy too big? I literally can't dismount. Welcome to the high life, bro. Going down. After all that, I went out to find something to tame. I honestly wanted to tame a Sarko, but before I did that, I made two crossbows. I just realized I never had a bow in this series. Episode. World. Yeah. And then I turned my 50 narcotics into 50 trank arrows. Aw yeah, now to find a crocodilian. On my way over to where I know Sarko spawn, I saw two raptors. One was purple and green and the other was ugly. The purple and green one also happened to be level 45, which is technically the max level, so I knocked it out. I went to find some prime meat, realizing now as I type this, I probably won't need prime meat. Anyways, idiot here decides to fight trikes, which I don't even think drop prime meat. Anyways, this idiot spends time running away, hoping for them to lose aggro. Then once the trikes lose interest, Big Brain here decides to attack a gotcha claws. How? Oh, he fast. Oh, he fast. He, he fast fast. Luckily, the stinky sloth doesn't like water. So he went for something more his level or size. A dillo. Maybe brain size, but you know. Then I found an explorer note. After I opened it, I could feel all the knowledge piercing through my brain. When I started to head towards my knocked out raptor, I saw an alpha raptor. I originally was going to run around it, but changed my mind. I thought to myself, it's just busy attacking a corpse, right? Well, it wasn't anymore. It was now fighting a drunk monkey, your father. Then out of nowhere, I got thirsty, so I ran to the beach. Now to run past this alpha raptor. I managed to have a big brain moment and make a sleeping bag, just in case. I managed to sneak past the alpha raptor and get to my still sleeping raptor. When she tamed up, I named her, now you're gonna wanna hold on to your hats for this one, purple and green gal. Genius. Anyways, I made her a saddle and well, I was surprised she could actually carry me. And for a raptor at this level, the damage output isn't too terrible in my opinion. On day four, I continued the journey of finding a Sarko. I found one attacking a gotcha, so I got its attention off the gotcha and on me instead. Then I started to knock it out. While doing that, a whole legion of compies came out of nowhere just to harass me. So I killed some while also made some distract the Sarko. And then I knocked her out. When she tamed up, I named her Dark Gal. When she tamed up, I named her Corpse River. Now to travel back home. I'm sure nothing will interrupt us. Mm-hmm. 
Sarko, run away! Uh-oh, come on, Sarko. Don't die on me like this. Oh, he's gonna die. Okay, um, well, we're just gonna have to fight it then. And he's dead. Uh, cool. Okay, bring it on, man. Okay, and well, all of my hard work flushed down the toilet. Nice. So I made two more sleeping bags and went back to try and get revenge. And, uh, it, it's full health. Well, I'ma just count my losses and leave. So I tamed a trike instead. I named him Second Choice. Don't tell him that he was adopted. Cause he wasn't, he was kidnapped. Or adult napped? Doesn't matter. On day five, I arrived back home. When I got back, I harvested some narco berries with my new trike. Then I turned my harvest into 360 narcotics. While those were crafting, I went to harvest more metal from the river stones. Then I made a full set of chitin armor. Now I no longer have my tech armor. Or do I? Nah, I don't. I don't care for the tech. I only use it because cloth armor is kind of ugly. After that, I made a cooking pot. Then with the cooking pot, I made some dyes. And then I dyed my armor. Man, don't it look pretty? Mm -hmm. I also dyed my tools and weapons while I was at it. They also look pretty cool. Yep. Later in the day, I found a bright green pteranodon. So I knocked her out and tamed her. When she tamed up, I named her Limer. Like Slimer, but without the S. And well, uh, yeah, she, she too weak. Luckily, I only had to drop like 30 arrows. Barely had enough stamina to get to the other side. But, uh, luckily, the Spino wasn't a problem, and hopefully will not be a problem in the future. Since my previous attempts of getting a decent tame were thwarted, is that a, is that a right, is that the right word? Since my previous attempts of getting a decent tame were thwarted, I decided to go and try my luck once again. Luckily, I can use my barely usable Pteranodon to fly for 10 seconds at a time. I believe this will greatly increase the process, hopefully. I had my eyes on the Spino on the other side of the river, or goal for, what would you call this, a bay? I don't know. Anyways, before I dispatched over there, is that the right word too? Are you stupid? Anyways, after I went over there, I made nearly 30 blue narcotic trank arrows. This way, knocking stuff out will be a little bit easier. When the dinos become level, I don't know, like 5,000 or so, it won't be as painful to knock stuff out. I nearly ran out of stamina by the time I got to the other side of the river. Bay. Gulf. Thing. The first arrow made the Christmas spino run away into the sea, so I kinda just gave up. Hopefully this means the dude's kinda lower level, and maybe the other one isn't as low of a level. If that makes sense. When I got over there, it began getting real dark. And to make things worse, or better, there's a third Spino. So, uh, I guess let's knock one out, right? I successfully knocked it out with two arrows, and turns out it's level 28. While it's not the best level, it's not the worst level either. So I went to check out the level of the other one, and to figure out, I had just shot one arrow. And it passed out with that one arrow. So I assumed it was low level. And it's level 6, so yeah, I was right. But now since it's asleep... Now that I have prime meat, let's go tame the other Spino. When she tamed up, I named her Spinorella. Genius. I got home and realized that I cannot possibly have thought through taming a Spino. Because I'm level 43, and I need to get level 72 to even make a saddle. So, uh, it's time to tame something else, I guess. Instead of just winging my luck, I decided to go get Crystal. So next time, I'll be able to see the level of what I may tame. I managed to carry about 100 Crystal with Limer before she was encumbered. More than I expected her to be able to carry. W Pteranodon moment. So with that being said, when I arrived home, I made an awesome Spyglass. I looked at Spinorella, and her melee was trash. The health on my trike was abysmal, but the Pteranodon had decent stamina health, but horrendous weight. Now, Red Boy, he's just Red Boy, but I will say, he had his two highest stats being melee and health, so that's a real W moment for real. Now, to take something I can hopefully use and not lose in the first, uh, I don't know, two minutes? I still want to tame a Sarko, so I made myself a Sarko saddle. While searching for a Sarko, I found a max level Iguanodon. It had decent stats, so I decided to knock it out. I knocked out and killed its friend as well. While I wasn't paying attention, a Therizinosaurus snuck up on me. I managed to get away in time before it dealt severe damage. After the Iguanodon tamed up, it got attacked by a Gapro. Then it got stuck on a tree, but eventually I managed to lead it away. Then I made it a saddle, and just so I could get attached to it, I named her Princess. On the way home, I was testing Princess. And for her level, she's not too bad. Then I attacked a Pteranodon. Get him, Limer. Uh, he's never coming back. Yeah, so um, I'ma I'm probably have to rescue him. I, I doubt he'll come back on his own. When I came across a few uh, corpses of dodos, I uh, 
also harvested some berries because you can never have too much narcotics, right? Mmm, drug. On day eight, I was digging through my inventory. And by digging, I mean dumping stuff places. And when I was doing that, I saw the Sarko saddle I crafted. And I thought to myself, wouldn't it be nice to have a Sarko? So, I suppose I should still tame a Sarko. While I do that, I suppose I should also find Limer. I decided to go without a tame, so I would only have to bring back a Sarko if I found one. And not like a Sarko, Limer, and the creature I took to go find Limer. That makes sense. And then I came across something I did not expect. Princess came looking for Limer. How sweet. How sweet indeed. So, uh, so much for having to go find Limer. Instead, let's go find me a Sarko. Aw, yeah. Eventually, I stumbled upon a level 43 Sarko with, in my opinion, pretty good stats. For the level that it is, of course. So I knocked it out, and this random Sarko, and did my age-old strat of flying into the sky and waiting patiently. And of course, when it tamed up, I went down to greet it. I gave him his saddle and started my journey home. Quickly after my departure, I got into a, um, let's call it an argument with these two giant mammals. After the fight, that also got a few other rambunctious critters in the scramble, I thought of the perfect name for the Sarko. Since the shade of green he has is very, very good looking, I decided to name him Emerald Ripper. And honestly, for his level, I have to admit, he is really good. His levels being 15 in melee and 12 in health are very impressive. Also, by the way, you may think me not being able to use soul balls isn't that much of a cripple, but honestly, it kind of is. It's not the worst one, but, uh, you know, it's... It sucks. Anyways, when I got home, I decided to start building a base, but I didn't want to go too far, so I decided to build it right here. Overlooking my old base, or crack shack on the shore, this area shall provide plenty of space for a decent sized house, and plenty of room for a massive yard for my future tanks. It will also be easily defendable, I think. Anyways, now I just have to destroy a few rocks and this tree. Tree first, now rocks. On day 9, I began gathering resources for stone foundations. I believe I need 81 of them, so it'll be pretty pricey. So with that being said, it took all day. But with that also being said, I began building on day 10. Yeah, bet you didn't expect me to say that, did ya? Anyways, I built like, the foundation of the house, and also like doors and some walls. That's all I could craft with what I had. So that means I need to gather more resources. Which means, yeah, the rest of day 10. By the end of day 10, I had harvested quite a lot of rocks. I managed to craft another 80 stone walls, but I think I'll still need more. I'm going to go ahead and place these, though. And yeah, I'm going to need a lot more. So on day 11, I harvested even more resources. Halfway through the day, I took a break to get water, and since my two challenges have been activated, I had to kill Lyman. I thought it was the best choice since I couldn't use flyers anyways. And um, I'm, I'm really sorry, Lyman. You didn't deserve it. Anyways, I also decided to craft two water jars so I don't have to keep running back to the river. With the resources I managed to gather this morning of day 11, I had 72 more walls to my name. So let me place them real quick. Oh, well, we're almost there, just need a little bit more. Also a roof, those are important. After I gathered more resources and finished the outer wall, I wanted to work on an inner wall. Instead of this, uh, let's call it a house, being just one open room, I wanted it to have multiple rooms. For example, the room with a dinosaur gate I plan on using as a storage and or breeding room. So I want to close it off from the other rooms of the house. This room will probably be the main entrance room, and these rooms, I, I, I actually don't know. That's future me's problem. What current me's problem is, is to finish the roof, because it's currently raining. And I'm getting wet because I don't have a roof, because it's raining inside of my house, because my roof doesn't exist. I think you get the point now, I'ma shut up. But before that, I'ma move stuff from my old crack shack on the beach to my new house. Now that moving everything is done, on day 13, I started to work on the ceiling attic roof thing. Actually, I think it's going to be considered all three, but you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Or maybe burn it, who knows. Halfway through day 13, as I was mining some stone, I decided to take a nap. I was rudely you woken up by a Dilophosaurus though, so I had to kill him. 
I take sleep very seriously. Anyways, when I got back home, I crafted more ceilings to continue my beautiful creation, called a house. On day 14, I worked on the roof part of the roof, like the angled part, you know, the, the part you see, like the, the outer part, yeah. On day 15, I was finally finished with the house. It took longer than I expected, but I'm glad I was able to do it. I had to do some illegal building techniques, but it all worked out in the end. Anyways, um, it's kind of ugly looking from the inside, but from the outside, it looks pretty nice. Just don't look at that spot. Anyways, now that the house is done, and now that the max level for wild dinos is now 90, I say we go tame something. I don't have any exact things I want to tame as of right now, and the days are already halfway over. And I don't even have a flyer to use, so, you know. I mean, we can tame one, but by the time we'll be able to use it, I'll be able to tame a higher level flyer, so. I suppose I'll just take something interesting if I find such a thing? Now, I can't fly, but luckily I have a Sarko that swims fast. Emerald Ripper, you swim! I eventually stumbled upon a dragon. Yes, I said dragon, those exist in this mod pack. So I began to knock it out. I underestimated its strength, however, and I almost lost Emerald Ripper. I dismounted from Emerald Ripper, ready to use him as a sacrifice, but the dragon only cared about me, which is good, I suppose. So I ran away. I managed to get away, and turns out the dragon trapped himself like an idiot. So I knocked him out. I went back to Emerald Ripper and began healing him, since he had like 140 health left. Then I killed a Stego for Prime. After that, I went and tamed the dragon. When he tamed up, I named him Ironwing. Now, I understand that one of the challenges is no flyers. Now, that means I just can't use them, not that I can't tame them. Not to mention, he walks more than he flies. In fact, he chooses to walk before he flies. I don't even know if he can fly. Anyways, I spent the rest of the day getting home. When I got home, I made a saddle for Ironwing. And honestly, he's a pretty good land now. Even if he has wings. One of the many ranges of challenges I may get is fighting a boss basically unprepared. But the thing is, I don't have to be unprepared necessarily. Now, I won't be breeding an army of Rexes every 10 days, but what I can do is tame some creatures that may help out if a boss battle happens, of course. So basically, I'll have an army of untrained dinosaurs, but sometimes quantity beats quality. Before I go out to tame every single Pokemon, I mean dinosaur, I crafted myself a soul gun. So I suppose that means I'll be bringing more Pokemon with me on my journey to collect all eight gym badges. Um, all eight artifacts, I mean. How many artifacts are there again? Never mind. Since Ironwing cannot fly yet, I suppose I'll be running around the map. Well, I mean, at least he's good at running. A few minutes into our journey and I got into an annoying fight from something called an Anthrocosaurus or something like that. It was super annoying. It dealt this constant poisoning like thing and it even dismounted me from Ironwing. So I pulled out Emerald Ripper for some support. Eventually I managed to kill it and the Paracers that got dragged into the conflict. So after that battle I went back to looking for something. I found this Lucanidae, Lusanidae this bug looking thing and I was going to knock it out but decided not to because it didn't display a torpor bar. So I assumed it just wouldn't get knocked out or something weird would happen and I decided not to risk the possibility of whatever would happen if I shot it. I did however find a Carno fighting two trikes. So I helped him out and then put him to sleep. When he tamed up I named him Spike with a Y instead of an I because Ys are cooler. On the morning of day 17 I came across another Carno. This one has better melee, but I'm pretty sure worse health. But by like one level of health and like three or four levels of melee. So maybe a spike replacement already, but overall a definitely decent war candidate. And then a raptor snuck up on me. Yeah. This uh, decreased the taming effectiveness in the Carno. Perfect. When he tamed up, I named him Spice with a Y instead of an I again. He has better melee but worse health, both by one level. But I guess I'll keep searching for more things to tame. While searching at the... What do you call this place? The... 
danger peninsula i don't know that's what i'm gonna call it anyways at this place i found a big group of dinosaurs just hitting each other and stuff so i decided to break it up by killing them all i also found another iron belly dragon but it wasn't a high level so i ignored it shortly after that i found a big feather dinosaur uppercut a smaller feather dinosaur so i killed them both I was about to kill this Textego when I noticed it was level 100, so I decided to tame it instead. Now, unfortunately, since it's herbivore, it'll take a little bit longer to tame. Which is why I don't usually like taming herbivores, because there's no vegetarian equivalent of prime meat, but I believe this Stego will be worth it. When he tamed up, I named him Tego. Now that I read that, that's a pretty stupid name. Near the end of the day, I encountered an Alpha Carno. So I killed it and got a new hatchet. And when I did that, I remembered why I don't like painting my armor and tools, because you replace them so often. I personally consider it to be a waste of time and materials, but they do look nice, so you know. On day 18, I noticed something called an Emila Natoka. Probably butchered that, but whatever. All I know for sure is that I want it. I successfully knocked it out. I was originally gonna go up and try to knock it out face to face, but then it fell into this trench. So I just repeatedly shot arrows at it until it went night night. When he tamed up, when he tamed up, I named him Exodus, like the second book in the Bible. Yeah, that's where I got it from, okay? It's a good book, you should read it. Immediately after, I saw a Therry, and I've been wanting one for wood collection and fiber and all that stuff, so I knocked it out. When I knocked it out, I immediately noticed another Therry, and it was a higher level. But I noticed that it only had higher health, and since I planned on using it as a resource gathering tame, I didn't bother knocking it out, especially since I don't think I had the sufficient tools. When the Therry tamed up, I named her the Rizzler. Get it? Therry Zler? Okay, it sounds stupid when you put it that way, but it's a good name. Probably. I don't know. Maybe it's not. It kind of sounds stupid. Anyways, I still want to tame a Dodic for stone gathering purposes. I found one, but don't think I'll be able to knock it out with the amount of arrows I have left, so I decided to just go home. On day 19, when I got home, there was a Therry on my front lawn. So I killed it. After that, I released every dinosaur I tamed in the last five days. And well, yeah, I'd say we did pretty good. Now to give them saddles. Well, the ones I want to use, that is. So I guess I'll put you two away. I got a saddle for Tego and the Rizzler, but the only one I could find that would possibly be Exodus's is at level 90. And while looking for a trike saddle to craft, I noticed a few things for something called a Valibuno Venetrix. There's no way I just pronounced that correctly. Anyways, these things look pretty interesting. It's like it has upgrades, like saddle and then a few upgrades, but you know. Anyways, I crafted the trike saddle to see if Exodus could use it, and well, it doesn't work. So I guess I'll have to wait until I'm level 90. I want to eventually perimeter this whole chunk of land up here off with walls. And the best way of doing that is with uh, dinosaur gates. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I began my path of building walls around this area. And by path, I mean my time-wasting experiment of building a lot of walls I, I don't i don't know i don't know what i call it it'll it'll have a lot of space i probably won't use but it might be worth it i don't know uh, dinosaurs might be safe who knows anyways i was placing my first batch of walls and as i was finishing i began to die of heat stroke i took off my clothes but that didn't work so i tried to make a bed and was too late so i died i respond at the sleeping bags but forgot that they were well over here so I had to run all the way back. When I got back, I wasted no time making five beds. In Ark, I honestly always forget to make beds until it's too late. Like, uh, oh, I died and uh, I have to, you know, run a marathon to get home. So maybe I should not be that stupid and just make a bed when I make a house, but um, that probably won't change. Anyways, I used Tego to get narco berries, and then I used the narco berries to make another 400 narcotics. On day 20, I turned all the narcotics into eight purple arrows. Then I went out to go find a Dodic to tame. Once I did, I knocked it out. And turns out I would have probably been fine knocking out the other Dodic. Eh, oh well. When he tamed up, I named him Stony. It was also dark out, if you couldn't tell. On day 21, I got three new challenges to suffer through, and the wild dinos can spawn up to level 180. Now, for the three consequences. I lost my inventory, it basically vanished, and I've lost everything. I can't put any levels into stamina, which I suppose isn't the worst thing, but speaking of the worst thing, I am now a vegetarian, which means I can't eat meat. I guess I'm making a farm now. 
But before I do that, I have to refill my inventory. Because if you didn't notice, I don't have anything now. So it sucks, but at least I didn't have too rare of items. Also, you remember the Dodic I just tamed? Yeah, he's gone. Anyways, I got myself a default set of metal tools. I'm not gonna bother painting them because I, I don't care. But hey, I guess on the bright side of things, I have flak armor now. I can also fly now, so that's cool. What's not cool is the fact that I need more polymer to get another soul gun. I killed a duck the first time for polymer. I fear I may have to find penguins, which isn't really hard, but you know. I searched the river nearby and was unable to find any ducks. Before I went out to search for another dodic, I made some narcotics. Luckily, I have some tier 1 trank arrows left over from previous days. These should be able to knock out a dodic. When I found a dodic worthy of taming, I had to be careful, because there was an alpha torvosaurus with like 19,000 health. That's over quadruple the amount of iron wing. But luckily, I can pick up the dodic, so I just flew it back home. When I got back home, I dropped the dodic and started knocking him out. And you know, I said this amount of arrows should be enough. I was wrong. So I stopped whilst the Dodic was running away from me to craft some tier 2 Trank arrows. When the Dodic came back for me, I put all that I crafted into him. I didn't think those would do it either, so I crafted more. Turns out those two arrows I just put into the Dodic would in fact do the trick. So I ran to him and gave him some berries. Now since I have a huge handful of berries in my hotbar, I just shared a few hundred or so. I'm really gonna need a farm. Medro berries are good, they're just inefficient when it comes to filling up the stomach. Not to mention, they don't boost healing. I mean, nor do other vegetables you can farm, but at least carrots, potatoes, corn, and lemons fill you up. They should add trees like apple trees and orange trees. Oh, and pear trees, that'd be cool. Anyways, on day 22, Stony the second tamed up. So I crafted him a saddle and started destroying rocks. After my first stone harvesting run, I had gotten a whopping 12,727 stone. That's a lot of stone. After my first wood gathering run with the Rizzler, I had gotten a whopping 3,613 wood. And a bonus, 451 thatch. Not a whole lot, but the Rizzler is also only level 93, so not too bad. Later in the day, I started my second batch of gate placing around the base. This time, I managed to craft 33 gates. After I placed them, I took a break to work on the farm. I started with a 3x3 stone foundation, but I'll need a lot more crystal for the glass, so I flew out to get some. I got to the mountain, killed some saber tooths, and then started harvesting obsidian. I thought I may as well while I was up there, but little baby pants can't handle the cold, so I had to flee. I decided to go to the Redwoods Mountain, but it's too cold there as well. It's cold over here too? Really? Why is it cold everywhere? So what better place to go than the volcano? Never mind. I, I would assume the volcano itself wouldn't be cold, but it's cold on the path of the volcano and I don't have enough health to spare, so I'm going to my favorite spot for crystal instead. That's right, the lava cave. On day 23, I arrived at the lava cave. And yes, it's cold out here, but I assumed it would be warmer in the cave. I was wrong. Inside the cave, it was either hot or cold, so I decided to mine as much crystal before I died. But luckily, the temperature rose so that it wasn't freezing anymore. Now, I don't have to worry about dying, and I can harvest as much crystal as I want. The temperature did decide to get much hotter the further in I went, but I had saved up enough health to gather a bit more crystal. I left the cave with 948 crystal. Not bad. When I got home, I started crafting everything. I also decided to connect the greenhouse farm thing to the house with this hallway tunnel thing. I finished the farm, I just needed to get water to it. And while I was placing the stone pipes, a dino Kyrus, level 180 of all things, decided to kill everything and damage my greenhouse I just built. Bro, no, you're joking, right? Well, it didn't kill the Rizzler, so that's good, I guess. But I've got no other choice but to try and knock this thing out. On day 24, I managed to lead it to the conveniently placed gates and start shooting Trank Arrows at it. I even crafted 5 tier 4 Trank Arrows just for this occasion. I eventually did run out of arrows, and this thing wasn't knocked out yet. Luckily, however, it managed to get itself stuck in the gate. So I ran back and quickly made 3 more tier 4 Trank Arrows. When I knocked it out, I realized that it requires Swamp Boss Kibble, and it's craftable at level 92. So I'm gonna try and quickly level up. I started with crafting 24 cooking pots. 
and near the end of crafting all 24 of these, a ceratosaurus was trying to attack me through my wall. I placed all the cooking pots, then destroyed them all, and now I want to tame me a ceratosaurus. I walked out my back door and realized the dino Kairos was gone. Yeah, the ceratos killed it. Perfect. Guess I really do have to tame this Cerrado now. At least it has good stats. I found the female Cerrado just off the cliff behind my base and I knocked it out. And realized something. It's a passive tame. Very unfortunate. But I did find out that Stony 2 is still alive. So that's good I suppose. I guess while the female Cerrado is sleeping like a horse, I'll go up and kill the other Cerrado with Stony 2. Or at least try to. Stony 2 managed to kill the Cerrado with the help from the Rizzler. On the very rainy morning of day 25, I fixed up the greenhouse and finished the piping. And once there was irrigation in the greenhouse, I planted the seeds. Then I remembered I need fertilizer. Luckily, I tamed a pig some odd days ago, so I fed him stem berries until his bowels exploded. Now that the greenhouse has begun growing things, I think it's time to find myself another tame. Since, you know, like 50% of mine were killed by the giant chicken. So I took the Rizzler out on an adventure. But I made sure to stockpile on tranks before I left. I found a level 180 Victuspinus near the big river Gulf Bay thing near my house. I started to shoot it with trank arrows, but it wasn't gaining any torpor whatsoever, so I went back home and crafted more. I'm not even going to bother going back to the Victuspinus to see if maybe it was a glitch because its stats weren't too great anyways, so off to find something else. I went to go look at the dinosuchuses I saw earlier to see if either of them were good levels, but on the way there, I noticed something in the water. It's called a Valibinovenetrix. Totally butchered that. Pretty interesting name. I spent a while trying to knock it out, and eventually managed to get its attention to do so. Oh, I hit it. When it knocked out, I went to get Prime and noticed one of the dinosuchuses fighting a Brachy. Oh, he's done for. He's a goner. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye, buddy. When it died, I took its prime meat. It wasn't using it anyways. And then I remembered the Vala Benevitrix. <laughs> and then I remembered the Vala... And then I remembered the Vala ben <laughs> Who named this thing? And then I remembered the Vala Benevitrix. Man, I'm, I'm gonna have a stroke doing this. And then I remembered the Vala Benevitrix <laughs> was the thing with the cool saddle modifications. I'm gonna call it a valley from now on. While the valley was taming up, I noticed the Vectus Finus fighting the Brachy. Idiot. Okay. When the valley tamed up, I named her Venom. She looks pretty cool, like if a Rex and a Spino had a baby. On day 26, I went out to get the silica pearls that I needed for Venom's saddle. The gauntlets and the muzzle require megalodon teeth, so I'll gather those after I get the saddle. So I traveled over to the Danger Peninsula to find some silica pearls. I only needed 15, but I gathered as much as I could while I was there. This Dinosuchus interrupted me though. That's slightly scary. Ouch. I left the Danger Peninsula with 463 silica pearls, which should last me a while. Speaking of doing stuff while I was there, I spotted this 168 RG with really good melee and good health. And since finding a good RG usually takes longer than it needs to, I decided to knock it out and try to tame it. I need a flyer anyways. Oh, you thought something wasn't going to go wrong? Well, you thought incorrectly, because a group of hyenas decided to choose my soon-to-be new RG as a snack. Oh, you're kidding, right? I guess I'm not getting a flyer today. How lovely. Anyways, when I got home, I made Venom a saddle. Just kidding, I need more metal. So I went to the Redwood Forest. When I got back, I started smelting more metal. And shortly after that... Yeah, Red Boy died. I'll tell you what, I know how much Red Boy means to you guys, so I'll make you a deal. If you like the video and subscribe right now, Red Boy will be revived. Oh, I didn't think you'd actually do it. Well, um, uh, he's alive now. And you unsubscribed, didn't you? Well, since now you want Red Boy dead, I think I'll keep him alive, thank you very much. Anyways, on day 27, I finally made a saddle for Venom. Venom appears to be able to bite and scratch, and that's about it. She doesn't seem to be super powerful, but we still have two upgrades left to explore. So now I have to kill five Megalodons, which shouldn't be too hard. At least she swims fast.
And five Megalodons later, I now have enough teeth for some upgrades for Venom. When I got home, I made both the Valley Gauntlets and the Valley Muzzle. So now Venom has some cool looking things on her claws and mouth. It's like the Megalodon teeth, which uh, kind of doesn't make sense, but like kind of does, but like kind of doesn't. You know what I'm saying? It's just kind of weird. Like she already has teeth and claws, but it, whatever. It says that the muzzle adds damage and penetration while the gauntlets add rend, whatever that means. I think rend is like a form of bleeding. I don't know something like that. I still want to find a flyer, so I'll go out and search for one. I just need to heal Venom up real quick. After she was fully healed, I started my search. On day 28, I found myself swimming towards Carnivore Island, hoping I'd find a good level RG or something similar. After I killed a fireball wyvern, I noticed that Venom's gauntlets and muzzle have durability, which means they'll eventually break, so that sucks, but I guess it makes sense. Speaking of eventually break, they broke during a fight with a car car and a Fasilosuchus and a Fireball Wyvern. So, um, they they don't really last that long, unfortunately, but uh, it was cool while it lasted, I guess. Later, I got into a fight with two Rexes and a Fireball Dragon and had to flee the fight or I'd risk dying. So that's what I did. I swam away until I could be safe enough to heal Venom a little bit. Eventually, I got away temporarily, but the Rex found me, so I killed it because he was alone. After Venom was healed up, I continued my search because unfortunately, I had yet to find myself a flyer. And immediately after I started the continuation of my search for a flyer, I fought a Fasilosuchus, and apparently they can dismount you. Awesome. Oh, so a Fasilosuchus can kick you off your mount. Perfect. Guess I'm going back to searching for a flyer on the Rizzler. I eventually found a level 174 Viper Tooth Wyvern in the Redwoods and a lot of beehives. Like, too many beehives. That's a lot of beehive. Why are there so many beehives? Oh, hello. Ah, I knocked you out first, loser. Later in the day, the wire and finally tamed up, and I named him Toxicity. Yeah, that's a name I just made. Anyways, on day 29, I made a saddle for Toxicity. You know, that name is pretty easy to say for the most part. What isn't easy is typing the dang thing. Yeah, but that's my problem. But what's also my problem is that Venom is still on Carnivore Island, so I gotta fly there and save her. Also, Toxicity is very fast and fun to fly on. Just watch this. When I got to the island, I immediately had to team up with Venom to kill a fireball dragon, but it's nice to see that she isn't dead. After that shabacle, I'm sure that's a word, I put toxicity into a soul ball and continued my journey on Venom. But note to self, don't attack Fasilosuchuses without a spare team. I found a fireball dragon, it wasn't a super high level, but it was a good enough of a level and it looked super cool. So I knocked it out and did my age old strat of flying into the sky while he tamed up. When he tamed up, I flew down to meet him. Whee! Whoa, hold up partner, let's not do that. I named him Firewing and then flew home. When I got home, I made a helmet for Firewing and gave him Ironwing's saddle. Rest in peace, Ironwing. Did I tell you how mad I am at myself for Ironwing's death? It was my fault after all. I left him on passive. Poor Ironwing, paired with an idiot like me. Anyways, I equipped the armor onto Firewing and he looks pretty cool. Well, cooler. Actually, you know what? Words cannot describe how cool he looks. He's also pretty strong, and he's not max level. Let that sink in. No, seriously, let that sink in. He wants to talk to you about my Discord server. A wonderful wasteland. Doesn't have to be a wasteland, you know? Join it and make the population of humans outnumber the population of tumbleweeds. Okay, you can kick the sink out now. After that, I crafted a fabricator. I don't have much of a use for it as of right now, but it will most certainly be useful in the new future. Anyways, yesterday as I was traveling home, I knocked out a Shunosaurus and a Tyranotitan for fun with toxicity. But now I want to tame them. So I went back to their location and noticed an Alpha Rex, so I had to be quick. Both tamed up and were put into Soul Balls, then I took out Firewing to see if I could take care of the Alpha Rex. I managed to catch it while I was distracted, so I basically just burned it to death. And when it died, I got a better crossbow and some chitin armor that is worse than flak. So overall, I'd say decent loot. When I got home, I named the Tyranotitan Sue and the Shunosaurus, uh, Shuzin. Yeah, that's nice. That's real nice. Sue isn't very powerful and she walks kind of funny like, so she's getting tossed. I don't want to play with you anymore.
But Shuzin, on the other hand, yeah, she gathers berries. That's what I tamed her for. Way to go, Shuzin. That is such a dumb name. I also saw a Mega Raptor in my yard, and she looked cool, so I tamed her. You did not just do that. Yeah, that's that's the only reason why. When she tamed up, I named her Mega Lady. My naming is on point tonight. When I put Shuzin in a Soul Ball, I noticed that she gathers stone and metal as well as berries, so that's interesting. Turns out Mega Lady doesn't need a saddle, and she isn't too strong, which wasn't expected, but she sure does look cool. Since the last 10 days have passed and the upcoming 10 days are here, I've got new consequences and challenges. Now, I apologize for past me saying stuff, but I'm changing things up a bit. For the challenges and consequences, the consequences are going to be stacking, and the challenges I will have to complete in the 10-day time frame, unless specifically told to do so sooner, which you'll learn about shortly. So from here on out, the consequences will stack, so I'll have 10 at the end of the video, so stick around. First up, I can no longer level up weight, which isn't too bad. Second, I have to fight the broodmother, like right now, or like the first thing I do. Lastly, I must collect an artifact, which I'll be doing with the broodmother challenge, and for the fourth consequence, I have to unalive myself 10 times. And last but not least, the most important factor is that wild dinosaurs can spawn up to level 360. This ought to be fun. Now to fight the broodmother, and no, I don't think I'll win, but in order to fight fight the broodmother, I need the artifacts in order to do so. So let's go get those. First stop, the hunter cave. I didn't think Venom would be able to fit in any of the caves, so I brought Mega Lady just in case. I guess it's a good thing I tamed her. And well, this is gonna be tough. The first big section has more than enough arachnids to kill Mega Lady, but luckily I could throw out Venom for support. Now, luckily, Venom could fit in the cave now, and it also turns out that the bugs and other creepy crawlies in the cave just kind of ignore her. I don't think it'll be super useful, but maybe it'll come in handy again. But with that being said, I managed to grab the artifact and start getting out. I did step on a snake though. Sorry, Danger Noodle. Did not mean that. When I got back to Mega Lady, I put Venom in a Soul Ball and left the cave. I ended up getting stuck near the entrance, but that's fine. Now to the Massive Cave, or the Massive Lava Cave, whatever you call it. When I got to the Lava Cave, I wasn't sure if Mega Lady would fit all too well, so I had some sleeping bags in case I had to run on foot. Best case scenario, I will have to just run around the creepy crawlies in the cave. I encountered my first swarm of bugs and threw out Venom. Only two spiders wanted to fight, so I killed them. Venom seemed to fit in the cave now, and since wild dinosaurs didn't notice her, I tried my best to sneak around everything. And that seemed to do the trick, until these dillos decided to attack me, so I had to fight. But I didn't have to fight as many things as I originally thought, but I still have a gap I need to cross, so I started attacking things. And then I got Mega Rabies, so I guess I'll die. Whee! Okay, attempt number two. I snuck past where I died last using the small tunnel to the left, and then found out that Dillos still do not like me. And then I accidentally stepped on the spider, so I slapped it. I got to the lava room with the artifact and tried to test my luck getting over a small gap of lava. I failed and fell in. So in order to try and rescue Venom, I tried to find a place I could climb up and couldn't. So I slightly panicked and tried to quickly put her in a soul ball and then throw her out again, but was quickly shred to bits by bats. This could have been avoided if I just had a soul gun. Anyways, attempt number three, codename Rescue Venom. And well, I failed. Venom died before I could even get there. That's, that's my bad. Now I've got nothing left to lose. Just gotta get the artifact, whether that kills me or not. For Venom. Oh, I got it. Worth it. I managed to snatch the artifact before I died, so I respawned at my house. On day 32, I repaired my armor, since, you know, it all broke. Now to finish my suicide mission of fighting the Broodmother. Next stop, the Center Cave. This hopefully shouldn't be too hard, but without Venom, it may be a challenge. Hopefully the game will allow Firewing in the cave since he's a good runner and is decently strong. Now, not only does the game allow Firewing in the cave, but it also allows him to fly. That's not all the good news, most of the stuff in here ignore him as well. So I flew over to the artifact and snatched it. And I know that most of you guys are probably gonna complain that flying in caves is cheating. Yeah, okay, I get that. So I walked out of the cave, and then I got stuck on the entrance. Easy fix though, and then I flew home. Now to fight the broodmother and lose. There's no way we're possibly winning. On the way home, I saw a level 312 alpha car car. 312 dude has 160,000 health. Yikes. 
Well, I guess it's time to rip the band-aid off. Yep, we're fighting the brood mother. I flew over to the red obelisk just to find a dino Kyrus guarding it, so I lured it off, and apparently toxicity does 30,000 torpor. That's kind of crazy. So now I'm even more upsetty spaghetti that I have to fight the brood mother. Also, I did find out that the red obelisk is the dragon's obelisk. I, um, keep forgetting. Hee <laughs> hee, silly me. Anyways, I flew over to the green obelisk and started the fight. Or should I say slaughter? That's what it's about to be. I also tested out Shujin's damage capability and well, she's gonna be pretty good in the fight, hopefully. But anyways, enough procrastination, let's do this. Nearly forgot fire wing. Up to 50? Oh yeah, I guess that mod works now. Get him boys, and he died immediately. That's funny. And there goes Shuzin. <laughs> it's level 1200 bro and stony's just like just chilling okay well well i guess since they let a dragon in here i guess i'll just sit up here and wait you know i ain't in no hurry yeah what are you gonna do about it i think stony might survive <laughs> i toasted you it's gonna take a while you should be able to put the uh, burn effect on the spider this is stupid roar all you want you can't do nothing about it this literally is not possible there's no way we did 4,000 damage not even that's like 3,600. I guess we'll die of old age. Wow. Bro, they don't even care about Stony. They're like actually best friends with Stony now. Known him since he was in kindergarten. They're actually like best pals, basically like siblings now. Stony is one of the minions now. Well, no better way but to pack up and kill myself. I'll try to lead him away though. I got a plan. My plan is I'm gonna lead them over this way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have soul balls ready. I'm gonna swoop up and I'm gonna save fire wing and I'm gonna save Stony. Yeah, this might not work. Come this way, buddy. Man, this would be so much easier with a uh, soul gun, don't you think? Okay, let's see. Oh, wait, wait, I can just pick it up. I can pick you up, man. There we go, I got you, I got you. Oh, perfect. Stony, come here. Well, consequence has been cleared and uh, we survived with uh, two survivors. And that's only because Stony became a minion and Firewing was uh, guided by me. And then I killed myself so that was that well wasn't that an interesting battle hurrah to our two lucky survivors stony just keeps on living doesn't he since basically all of my dinos were wiped out in the battle of 32 i needed some more so on day 33 i decided to tame some more i've got a few on my list but before anything i need more polymer so i powered up my fabricator for the first time to make some the penguins will live another day with that being done, let's go find me something to tame. Later in the day, I came across a level 312 Viper Tooth Wyvern in the Redwoods, so I knocked him out. And when I did that, a Rex popped out of nowhere, so I had to kill it. Got him. Wait a minute. Hey, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up there, buddy. Hold up, partner. Hold up. Wait a minute. Get out of here, bruh. After I gave the Wyvern some prime, I flew into the sky and waited. When he tamed up, I named him Toxicity 2, for obvious reasons. When I got home, I made a saddle for Toxicity 2. I found an Ultimasaurus and, um... Uh oh, that's not good. Well then, yeah, that happened. So I respawned and eventually got close to my death and well, um... That's probably fine. Never mind. We've already lost Toxicity too. This is why we can't have nice things. Well, I guess I may as well try to tame the Ultimasaurus now. Uh oh, oh, he fell off. Perfect. Hey, big boy. I definitely don't have enough tranks to knock you out. Ouch. That was my eardrums, man. Ow. Well, that was my last arrow. Guess I'll die. So on day 34, I went out to find something to tame. Again. Maybe this time I won't immediately lose what I tame. Later in the day, I found a high level Torvosaurus. I successfully knocked it out using tier four Trank arrows. And when I went to feed it some prime meat, idiot here decided to have a little nibble. Really, bro? Are you serious? You're such a moron. It's unfortunate, but there's no point in leaving this, so I may as well tame it. Very upsetting though. You're going to timeout after this one, Firewing. I agree live action me. He is definitely getting a timeout. When she tamed up, I swooped down and put her in a soul ball. Now, she's still a pretty high level, but she'd be an even higher level if idiot here wasn't an idiot. When I got home, I named her Vexus. Like Texas, but with a V instead of a T. 
I also made her a saddle. Now, she's not super powerful, but she has venom and she can turn in place, so she's keepable. After that, I made a feeding trough. Not to feed my dinosaurs, but so I can make a lot of spoiled meat. Sounds a bit weird when it comes out like that. Anyways, I ended day 34 with harvesting metal at the volcano. Then I noticed some acros, and one had really good melee, I think. But the problem is, they're passive tames, and I don't know how to tame them, so I'll have to learn about that for tomorrow. So apparently, you have to hurt the acro and then feed it narcotics when it roars. Kinda stupid. So that's exactly what I did on day 34. Or attempted to do, that is. So, first things first, I crafted a sniper rifle and plenty of ammo. Well, hopefully plenty. Anyways, last thing I need is some dino gates, bear trap, and lots of narcotics. So now that we have those, let's go try to tame this thing. Uh, hopefully that should do it. Ooh, he tried to nibble my booty. Okay, so let's put these here. Stop hurting my gate! Stop it! Uh-oh, plan B. Well, I got him off the gate at least. No, stop doing that. Go into your shield mode, man. That's what you're supposed to do, is it not? And there goes my sniper rifle. Great. Aren't you supposed to go into your shield mode or something? Ow. I don't get it. Oh, this game's dumb. And well, it wasn't working. The acro was supposed to go into shield mode, but it never did. Even after getting it to like 150 health, it never entered shield mode. So I think the wiki lied. With that being said, I think we'll just leave this guy here. Why can't anything be a normal knockout tank? It just had to be special, didn't it? And well, with most of my day wasted, I spent the rest of it harvesting metal, obsidian, and crystal. I have yet to complete my challenge of unaliving myself 10 times, so on day 36, that's exactly what I did. And there we have it, 10 deaths. Consequence cleared. Anyways, with those shenanigans over with, I noticed a level 348 Herrerasaurus around my corpse bags. So I wanted to tame it. I knocked it out and then collected my well-deserved items in my corpse bags. Ah yes, 10 specimen implants. They should have made recipes out of these. People would have been killing themselves left and right. Anyways, when the Herrerasaurus tamed up, I named him Harry. Yeah, that makes sense. After that, I noticed something called a Platyosaurus, which is like a giant parasaur looking thing. It wants narcotics to tame and I have some leftover from the acro fail, so I tamed him. I named him Plate Man. Harry isn't too powerful, but his attack speed is really fast, so his DPS must be insane. Plate Man isn't powerful at all either, but I didn't expect him to be. But what he is good at is gathering berries and thatch. He also seems to be able to make narcotics in his inventory, which can come in handy. Yup, it's confirmed. I left narc berries in his inventory and he makes narcotics passively. That's awesome. He doesn't even need spoiled meat, just 5 single narc berries. So I'll leave him out to make that. Apparently he has a crafting page in his inventory. It's called Platyosaur Mush, which is identical to narcotics. This is kinda game changing. On day 37, I found another Platyosaurus. I didn't have any narcotics on me anymore, so I just used some narco berries. And this took way longer to tame than I originally thought. This is the last time I tame one of these things with narco berries. Dang, like bro was not getting hungry. It would have been quicker just to run home and grab some narcotics or run to a beach and kill some jellyfish. Oh hey look, it's ready to eat. I named her, drum roll please. Plate Woman. I'm definitely going to breed Plate Man and Plate Woman and have an army of narcotic makers. Best plan I've ever had. So when I got home, I made a best eggs machine. And then I started breeding the plate couple. On the morning of day 38, I had 10 plate babies to hatch. I was also greeted with over 200 narcotics from the plate parents. Anyways, I forgot I need some air conditioners to hatch these things, and in order for air conditioners to work, I need power. So I made a generator and some air conditioners. And while I was doing that, I may as well add lighting to my new powered house. And now with that done, let's hatch some plate babies. I seem to have gotten 11 total, so I must have gotten a pair of twins. This means I'll have 13 narcotic makers. Awesome! I am super excited for this. If one platysaur can make 100 narcotics overnight, imagine how many 13 would make overnight. That's actually really simple math, it's 1300, you're welcome. At the end of the day, I put a lot of narco berries in each and every single one of my plate babies, so let's see how much they make overnight. On the morning of day 39, I was ready to collect my first night's harvest. Comment down below how much you think I made. 
920. Were you close? It wasn't as much as I was hoping for, but that's still a lot of narcotics. Remember when I unalived myself 10 times? Well, in those 10 toaster baths, the Herrerasaurus, now known as Harry, had destroyed some of my piping. So I went to fix that. After that, I went out to find myself a viper tooth wyvern or a dragon, or any sort of wyvern or dragon for that matter. While traveling into the redwoods, I saw something called a bunyip. It intimidated me, so I ignored it. I may possibly tame it later. As of right now, I want to tame me another viper tooth wyvern, and since I've seen them spawn here, I'm going to look here. And would you look at that, there one is. When I knocked it out, I noticed a max level Colossus Scorpius. So I'll definitely try to tame that afterwards. Whoa. When he named up, I named him, uh, Toxicity 3. Yup, I just did that. Toxicity 3, here we go, boys. Anyways, with Toxicity back in my possession for the third time, I tried to knock out the Colossus Scorpius. Just kidding, I needed a saddle. So I guess I'm doing this with Firewing. No big deal, it was a pretty simple knockout. She wanted three spoiled meat, and luckily I had exactly three to give her. Now if that ain't a sign, I don't know what is. Near the end of the day, she tamed up and I named her Stinger. Again, wise are superior than eyes. I'd replace my eyes with wise if I could. Thank God I'm blind. Yo, I'm next. No! Whoa! What the hell? I did that with love, boy! Uh, what's out of hubbub? Oh, thank you, Dad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, really. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's okay, it's okay. When I got home, I made a saddle for Toxicity 3, and while doing that, something was attacking my narcotic makers. So I took out Vexus and killed the stinky Herrerasaurus. And since it damaged my greenhouse, I had to repair that as well. On the morning of day 40, I collected 1,338 narcotics. Business is booming. I wanted to tame that bunyip I saw yesterday, and to make sure I wouldn't fail, I made two tier 6 trank arrows. The black tip. Ooh, scary. But before that, I made a platform saddle for Stinger. Her tail attack does a lot of damage, and she has over 20,000 health. So, she's definitely keepable, that's for sure. She can also grab things. Like that. Yup. I gave Toxicity 3 his saddle. Now let's go tame ourselves a bunyip. Or should I say, bun yippee. <laughs> uh, sorry. Toxicity 3 actually did most of the work, and I ended up not even using the tier 6 trank arrows. So that's cool, I suppose. Saving him for another day now. Anyways, I knocked out the bun yip, and then just waited. A long time. When she tamed up, I named her Boonira, then flew home. When I got home, I thought the name was stupid, and unlike my other maybe stupid names, like this one was stupid stupid, like this one was a special kind of stupid, like this one was just dumb. So I changed her name to Bullseye, much better. On day 41, we got a few new challenges and consequences. Now I'm gonna apologize once more, because I, being quite the fantastic idiot I am, didn't think a whole lot of this through. And this is just a pilot idea, and in order to test it, I need to play it. And while I play it, I may as well make a movie out of it. Which is what this is. So with that being said, there is a change of plans. For the next 50 days, I will be getting two new challenges every 10 days. Some may stack, others will last for the current 10 day period, or have to be completed within the 10 day period. But, and this is a very big but, I'm sure you noticed I said for the next 50 days instead of 60 days. I will deliver on my promise of having 10 challenges on the last 10 days, so stuff will get crazy at the end, so I promise it'll be worth your time to stick around. Now on to the challenges. First off, I have to blow up one C4 in my house, and I can no longer harvest things by hand. I'll need a dino from here on out. Alrighty, now to get that C4 explosion part over with. I had to make some more polymer and crafted up some more gunpowder, but with that out of the way, I now have one C4 and one C4 remote. I also made an awesome teleporter because it's day 41 and I should have made one like 20 days ago. Anyways, let's blow up this C4. Now the challenge just says blow it up in the house, it doesn't say where, but I've got an idea. I'll blow it up right here. That didn't throw as far as I thought it would. Alright, you ready boys? Whoa, okay, that blew up a lot more than I thought it would. 
That's okay. It's okay. After the epic explosion, I placed my awesome teleporter pad in a good location. I thought it would be a cool idea to patch my house up with metal structures. Almost like as if my house were a terminator. Terrahousinator. Nah, that sounds stupid. Anyways, I think it looks pretty cool. On the morning of day 42, I got 1,653 narcotics. Even more than before. This just keeps getting better and better. Until I run out of narco berries, of course, but that's no big deal, really. After that, I spent a good amount of time finishing the walls around my base. And finally, after like 40 days, I'm done. I'll probably place gates eventually. Anyways, apparently there's an Ultimasaurus right outside my base, and it's way above max level, which I assume it corresponds with tech dino levels, but I failed last time I tried to tame one, so this time I'm hoping that won't be the case. And luckily, I've got two black tip trank arrows with its name on it. Oh, I was not expecting him to break everything else. That startled me a little bit. Okay, well... Oh, that, that's actually really painful. Oh, you hurt a lot just with your roar. Okay. Um, so maybe, maybe I should go this way. It, it really, it really hurted, uh, not only me, but also, uh, my greenhouse. Uh, where'd it go? And he just destroyed the rest of my pipes. Nice. Ow. Oh. Okay. It's like a radius and it's like an aura at the same time. So... I, uh, let's just keep doing this, man. Man, like, I don't... I don't want to waste these. Did it do headshots? Ow. Uh... So those were my red tips. Oh, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me! Oh, uh, what are you destroying up there? Okay. So, Houston, we have a problem. I gotta make more narcotics because uh, me ran out. All right, time out. I'm sure you've seen the damage it's done and it's not easy to tame whatsoever. But with more narcotics to my name, let's go back for round two. Ow, I thought I could escape, but I was wrong. Please don't tell me it finds its way up here. I don't care how many times it has to kill me. Just don't open the doors. Okay. Oh, I missed a black tip. Bruh. I don't guess I'll die again. It's you and me, bro. What are you gonna do about it? What, are you gonna kill me? No, you're not. Okay, yeah, you will. Oh, hey, look, you're still here. Ow. Luckily, you're kind of stupid, so... Ow. I don't know where that one went. Can we make it? Are we gonna make it? Nope. We can make one yellow arrow and that's like all we've got gotta make this one count oh he found my gates oh he found his way in oh he found his way in um he should not have done that he found his way in he found his way in dude this is game over i'm spawning over here this game over man <laughs> bro please tell me he's torpor running soon okay timeout number two yeah he found his way in Turns out, he's intelligent. That's really scary. Let's just hope he doesn't ransack my whole base. I really don't want to lose my narcotic makers. That would be a travesty. Okay, I think he, I think he might be torpor running. Oh, he is. Okay, good. Good. Oh, dude, this is a miracle, dude. Look at all of this stuff he could have destroyed. Well, would you look at that? It seems everything has worked in my favor. The Havoc Maker has been subdued. While he was taming up, I did a few things. I repaired my armor and my walls. I probably won't bother fixing my greenhouse though. But the fact that he broke the glass with his roar, that's, that's kind of crazy. On day 43, the Ultimasaurus tamed up and I named him Armageddon. I didn't know what saddle to make for him because there wasn't one specifically for him. So I tried a Giga Saddle and that didn't work. So I tried a Rex Saddle next and to my surprise, that worked. Good, so I only wasted the resources on one saddle. I suppose I should tame a Giga now. And well, uh, he's powerful. That part's obvious, but I can't tell exactly how much damage he does. I think it's around 3,500, but it fluctuates. I've seen 5,000, 6,000, and even 7,000. I assumed maybe he would do more if he was sprinting or if he was running for a long period, but I couldn't get accurate data. 
Anyways, I killed an arachnid monkey thing and got a rogue token and some DNA. I also got this pike, but I probably won't use it. But I have 51 levels to put into Armageddon, so I think I'll get him to like 250,000 health and then just shove the rest into melee. Yeah, so I think it's safe to say he's pretty tough. Anyways, I found this rogue, Kyanos Flux, so I started a fight with it. But it has nearly 400,000 health, so I healed up Armageddon before I got humbled. Well, it has a lot of health, but it doesn't do a lot of damage. I ended up killing it and I got a Kyanos Flux Brain, whatever that does, another rogue token, and a better hatchet. So overall, not too bad. Now keep in mind, Armageddon may seem overpowered, but trust me, there are things out there that can still kill me. And once we get to day 100 where the creature levels are 5 digits, yeah, it's, it's gonna be pretty insane. Also, I never got to test out Bullseye, so I made her saddle and did exactly that. She's not super powerful, but she's cool. On day 44, I found an alpha car car, so I challenged it to a fight. It also wasn't super challenging, but when I killed it, I got some alpha blood, a car car chibi, and four loot crates. My gambling addiction side of my frontal lobe and my tiny brain started firing up, and I had to know what was inside. So I opened them. And I got some really good loot. The best loot out of it was a better crossbow, riot leggings, a magnum, a chainsaw, and some wide variety of saddles, so pretty good I'd say. I'll have to kill alphas more often. After that, I teleported home. When I got home, I made a refrigerator. Then I went to the volcano to harvest some metal, obsidian, and crystal. At first, I was harvesting my pickaxe, then I remembered I have a chainsaw. Which doesn't really make sense for metal and stuff, but I'm not complaining. On the morning of day 45, I was looking to make some ammo for my magnum. But apparently you have to be level 115 to learn it. So, um, I guess this gun will be useless for another 13 levels. I did collect nearly 2,000 narcotics though. Also, whipping out the magnum has a cool animation. And I'm sure you noticed something. Yeah, I harvested something with my hands and not a dinosaur. So, to punish myself for disobeying, I threw out everything I gathered and everything that can be used for harvesting. I even took off my hands. It was very painful. I guess this means I have more hotbar space. So, let's start working on some guns. In order to make the weapon smithy, I need more oil. And since I can't harvest by hand, I'll need to take Stony with me. Luckily, for whatever reason, he's a decent swimmer. And, uh, I only got stone. So, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need an Anki. On day 46, while I was looking for an Anki, I found something called an Odegaron, or an Odegaron, I don't know. It looked interesting and was max level, so I knocked it out. When he tamed up, I named him Ripper. I would replace the I with a Y, but then it would just be Riper, and that's just weird. Anyways, he does around 1000 damage and has 150,000 health, so pretty decent. We still need to find an Anki though. I found an SCP called the Unclean One, so I killed it and got some goodies, including oil. This is why you kill everything on site, because you may never know what they may have to offer with their corpses. And by that, I mean, let's not get into detail. While still searching for an Anki, I saw something called a Camellios with 4.5 million health. So, um, yeah, we're, we're gonna stay away from that. Oh. With my search for an Anki still being a search, aka, I haven't found one, I came across something called a... Basil guys? Probably butchered that, but that's okay. Because I was originally going to kill it, but then I wanted to tame it. So I did exactly that. When he tamed up, I named him Beetlejuice, because that's what his name makes me think of. Beetlejuice can cause explosions, and that's pretty epic. Shortly after that, I found another Camellios. And you know the other one had, uh, 4.5 million health? Well, um, this one's slightly higher. It's uh, level 208,080 and has um, 59.3 million health. So yeah, that's slightly unsettling. Anyways, on day 47, I killed an Alpha Carno and got an Ascended Chitin chestplate with over 400 armor. Then I found something called a Teostra. So I took out Armageddon and started attacking it. And it actually put up a decent fight. It dealt nearly 20,000 health to Armageddon, and I didn't get many goodies in return besides Sulfur. Yuck. I eventually found a high level Anki, but she was getting attacked by two high level Rexes. So I saved her and then carried her back to my base. 
When I got back to my base, there was an E Spinus or an Espinus with 50 million health just chilling in my base. You're joking. I had to kill it, tame it, or lead it away. And leading it away seemed like the only option. Unfortunately, Toxicity's toxic balls, or whatever you call them, didn't seem to do anything. Oh, Firewing's Fire Breath didn't do anything either, but it doesn't seem like the Espinas does a whole lot of damage. I'm not risking anything yet though. I did however manage to remove some dino gates and let it roam outside my base walls. Luckily it doesn't fit through the gates, so I can just place them back and if I don't have gates it should be fine, I should keep it out. Okay so, um, it does do a lot of damage, sometimes. So I found out, um, it, it does do, uh, some damage. Uh, just a little bit, I guess. Then I quickly went to replace the walls I picked up and got killed by a raptor. You're joking. Oh, embarrassing. Very embarrassing. It took me a little while to fix the wall, but I eventually did. Eh, good enough. On day 48, the Anki was still roaming the spacious area called my roof. So I grabbed her and put her on my front lawn. I then started to knock her out with toxicity. She wants three regular kibble and luckily I got 10 from the alpha car car. While the Anki was taming up, I saw a level 68,256 Velociprey outside my walls. It was making annoying sounds, at least I assume it was coming from it, and it didn't seem too dangerous. So I attacked it. It was actually kind of cute and it put up absolutely zero fight, so I, I kind of felt bad. I, I didn't even get any good loot either, let alone any loot for that matter. So, I feel really bad. I should probably tame one of these one days. Honestly, man, that thing was so cute. Would have been a nice shoulder pet. I got oil from the unclean SCP a few days back, so I don't necessarily need oil as of right now, so I don't think I'll be going to the ocean today. The problem is, I don't remember what I needed oil for. Oh yeah, the weapon smithy, I remember now. I, I had to go back and read my notes. While I was crafting my favorite gun, the AK-102, and a scope attachment for it, and even some ammo for it, cause how else are we gonna shoot it? I went to craft more spark powder and realized it was about time to make a chemistry bench. So I did. Ah, much better. I went on a slight killing spree with my new toy. I killed a few dodos, a dillo, and a pig. I didn't think I'd be able to kill much else, not at the levels they could spawn at, that is. But I was doing over 300 damage to the pig, so I thought maybe it was like percentage based, like the health, the more health the creature has, the more damage the bullet will do. That was my theory, at least. And I tested this theory on a drunk monkey, and uh, my theory was wrong. Poop was flung at me and I had to retreat to the safety of Ripper. And by that, I mean I had to run away covered in dung and then flung out Ripper to not die to your father. On day 49, I realized that all my narcotic makers had run out of narco berries. So I went to gather some more for them. The problem is, is that I don't have any good berry gatherers. So I need to go tame something like a Bronto, Shunto, or a Bracky, something like that. There was a level 720 Bracky outside my base, but someone, not naming names, but their name rhymes with Tree Spinners or Tree Spinus. Uh, they killed it, maybe. I don't know how to pronounce their name. I found another unclean one SCP, so I killed it, and turns out only Ripper can harvest the corpse. That's weird, but I'll accept it. Who even needs to explore the ocean when unclean ones give plenty of oil? USA about to come and raid the island for these unclean ones. Wait, isn't that just Britain? And then I found a jellyfish. Uh, no, a, a massive one. Outside of water, floating over land. So since it was breaking the laws of physics and, well, probably other things, I had to kill it. Well, I tried to at least, it started floating away. So I found something else called a Kushala Daora, and after I knocked it out, I realized it was a passive tame. Oh, it's a passive tame. Oops. Not bad, bro. So I guess I'll go back to the illegal jellyfish. Oh, well, okay. I can do that, I guess. 
well it just doesn't take damage so you have fun up there and um yeah I'll, I'll leave you alone man okay bye and well yeah it's basically invincible so i'll just leave it there maybe it'll float into the sun or something who knows on day 50 i found a bronto chilling by himself on the beach so i knocked him out he wants exceptional kibble and unfortunately i don't have that so i'll have to use a lot of veggies eh, this is gonna take a while Back to the reason I heavily dislike taming herbivores, because there just simply isn't a prime meat that the stinky salad eaters like. You have to make kibble, you can't find that. Well, not usually that is. Eventually he tamed up and I named him Farmer. I saw a Camellios with like 60,000 health, so I thought I could take it in a fight. And well, I could take it. I was right. Usually I've seen them with millions of health. I mean, I didn't get any loot, but I thought it was worth it. I don't know. When I got home, there was an Indoraptor on my lawn, so I killed it. I believe I'll be able to make an Indoraptor or an Indominus Rex if I kill enough of them, but that'll be in the future for sure. Anyways, I used Farmer to gather a bunch of berries. After I made him a saddle, of course. And honestly, I feel like he isn't that good at gathering berries. But I did see another Camellios outside my base, and he only had 444,000 health. Which is weird, because usually they have around 50 million at that level. I don't know if my game's bugging out or what, but I'm not gonna waste an opportunity like this. And well, apparently it can just kill you, like that. It didn't kill Armageddon, thank the lord baby Jesus on that one, but the writer? Nah, you just die. I came back and Armageddon sent the beast to its grave. I found an E Spinus and it had like 300,000 health. This game's gotta be glitching because there's just no way. The only thing I did in settings was make the days slower so that Taming Farmer wouldn't have taken an in-game week. So does the speed of the day really affect the health of these in-game bosses? To test this, I changed the speed back to 1 and logged back in. My other hypothesis is that just leaving and then coming back possibly fixed a glitch that just made these creatures have millions upon millions of health. That's what I'm hoping for because them having millions of health is just kind of stupid. It's not even really scary, but like it's kind of dumb looking, you know? None of them seem to be overly powerful in battle. I just, I don't understand why they have so much health. Nor do I understand why their levels are so high. The max level is 720 as of right now. Unless something about making the difficulty 24 just really screws with stuff, I guess. When I logged back in, the E Spinus health did not drastically increase. So I think my hypothesis number two was correct. And with that being said, I killed it. Alrighty, day 51, new challenges and the dinos can spawn up to level 1440. Although some dinos can just spawn way higher than that for some stupid reason. Anyways, I have to blow up another C4 in my house. Fate really just wants me to destroy my house, I guess. I can also not use water dinos for the next 10 days, which is really unfortunate because honestly, I was about to start a water base. This doesn't mean I can't, it just means I have to wait until day 61 to actually tame a water dinosaur. Okay, let's, let's blow up our house again. And well... Yeah, it did basically nothing. It kind of surprised me. Um, but uh, anyways, let's patch it up with some metal. I mean, it looks all right. But with that out of the way, let's build that water base. Well, we will, just not yet. We have to wait for everything to craft. It takes a little while, you know? On day 52, I began building the water base that I wouldn't be able to properly use until day 61. But before I did that, I built this porch thing behind my house. I, I don't know, I thought it was cool, I don't know. And I'm done. I would show you the process of building it, but it was like a total of three in-game days and all you would hear is a bunch of sounds from the structures being placed and well, that wouldn't be very pleasant because it'd be like a whole minute or too long and I don't think you'd like that. So instead, I'll just show you the finished result. And yes, by the way, it is day 55. It took so long because it's very big. Basically, it's just this one big and long room with a pool-like thing at the end. Back here is where I'll store all my water dinos. Well, maybe not all of them, but like, you know, the ones I'm currently using or whatever. Anyways, there's like these stairs on the side so you can uh, like park your dino to the left or the right of it and then jump off and then, you know, get out. And if you fall into the water, there's these uh, stairs that like go deeper into the water. So then you can get out without like 
a water dino. That that should make sense. That it made sense to me, and I'm kind of stupid, so that that should make sense to you. But yeah, it's a it's a pretty big structure, and I'm gonna have to wait like five or six days to use it. But we will definitely use it. I tell you that much. On day 56, I went out to find me a dragon or a wyvern to tame. It's been a few days since I tamed one, so I want to find another one. I ended up finding a level 1,488 Teostra instead, so I knocked her out and tamed her. Since the levels are so high, it's taking so unbelievably long to tame. I hate to say this, but on day 57, she finally tamed up. And when she tamed up, I named her Theo. And she, she actually lost health. I wonder if they have like a, a giga-like mechanic, because she had over 500,000 in the wild, but now she only has 220,000. That's okay. And, well, it's no longer okay. She's weak. Like, crazy weak. She's level 2000, but doesn't do more than 2000 damage. I'm starting to think that making the difficulty 48 might mess with things. I hope not, but to test this theory, I went to tame a dragon or a wyvern. So, back onto the search for that. I found this high level iron belly wyvern. Ow. Good night. What are you? What? That's probably fine. <gasps> Yikers! That's... No, I take it back. It's not fine. I'm gonna take it... Uh, I'll take it my wyvern ain't doing so good. So that's a wee bit scary. Turns out, things aren't fine. When an SCP is hiding, you should probably be a little cautious. As I was waking up, something was attacking my narcotic makers. Uh, again. And this time, I actually lost a few of them. Three, to be exact. At least... I think it was three. Anyways, we've stranded Toxicity 3 next to an SCP, so let's go see if we can rescue him. Turns out, we can. And then we got immediately mauled by Achillobators. We survived, but while well, it was slightly unnecessary. So I led them off a cliff and got out Armageddon. Time to deal with this so-called Predator SCP man. See what I did there? Never mind, let's kill this dude. He didn't even drop anything. The disrespect from this man's. Anyways, the Iron Belly Wyvern's taming effectiveness was at 85%, which I think is still worthy of a tame. On the morning of day 58, the Wyvern tamed up. I named her Chainmail, and she is weak. Okay, so I think my hypothesis was correct. The game is, in fact, broken. When you tame something, it, like, loops back around or something, making whatever you tame super weak. Like, almost as if it resorts to like level one or something as long as what you tamed was near max level of course so i, I this is a little bit unfortunate anyways i fought an scp 173 and this thing put up the most of a fight i've seen this entire playthrough i eventually climbed onto a rock and the stupid little idiot couldn't get to me yeah <laughs> idiot learn to climb he ran away and i had to chase him until he gained interest in me again hey I come back here. So I killed him. I got element and a blueprint to craft my very own. Probably won't do that. But then I killed a bunch of these red SCPs. They seem to be connected through something called a blood hood. Like a brotherhood, but with blood instead of... I think you understand. Turns out you can summon them as like tains. I, I don't know exactly how it works, but there's only one way to find out. Luckily, I just got element from an SCP I killed not too long ago. That's right, the rock idiot. So I made two of these, a Dominion one and a no-name one. It didn't have a name. So I summoned the no-name one first, and it's a red miniature forest titan. He's not weak, but he's not strong either. I named him Evil Groot. The Dominum one isn't any stronger than Evil Groot. It's basically just a mini Rex, but bright red. I named him Dom. Family. 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 On day 59, I slept. I was just so tired, so I just slept. On day 60, I began to do stuff around the whole entire base. Welcome, traveler. You are feeling very sleepy. Wake up. Okay, you awake now. I <laughs> skipped this part for you. It was very boring. Now, seriously, wake up. The show is about to resume. Well, here it is. The last 10 days with 10 challenges and level 25,000 wild dinosaurs.
If you're still here, I thank you for sticking around and I hope you subscribed. All right, wish me luck. The next couple of days weren't recorded. Well, I mean, they were, but the file got corrupted. Go figure. Anyways, the upcoming footage until halfway through day 94 is slightly recreated. The start of day 90 was a raid of a bunch of spiders. That's right, it's a broodmother raid. I couldn't figure out which buttons on the controller work for certain keys, and I couldn't sprint. So to say I struggled would be an understatement. You'll never take me alive! Never mind, maybe you will. Well, I guess while I'm back inside, I may as well fix my armor. Not like it'll do much, because it's gonna get broken immediately, but whatever. After my armor was repaired and returned to my body, I went outside and, to my surprise, all the spiders had despawned. So I guess there's still some good left in this world. I also pulled 5,000 narcotics from the bags of my ex-narcotics makers. Rest in peace, guys. You did good. You did real good. On day 91, I began the building of my parkour course. And putting those two words together sucks. Parkour and course should not be right next to each other. Anyways, I was pretty flabbergasted. This was harder than I thought it'd be. One, because I have a controller, and two, apparently I'm a natural at making complicated parkour. I ended up building it at my large ocean base since most of that space wouldn't be filled anyways. And it was pretty fun to build, but the course definitely isn't easy. Here's me beating it to prove that it's at least possible. And there we go. Do you think you could beat this parkour course? Comment down below. Do you think parkour and course being right next to each other in a sentence is stupid? Like the video if you do. I think it is. So I like the video. On day 92, I turned all of my narcotics into tier 6 trank arrows. And 5,000 narcotics makes 10. 10 tier 6 trank arrows. Wow. Well, anyways, I went to go find myself a shark. So I could finally park something in my ocean base. By the time he tamed up, it was day 94. Since their levels are so high, it takes literally forever to tame. They're starting to feel like herbivores. And well, we lost the shark already. He couldn't fit in the gate and an alpha Bracacinius killed it. There's no way I pronounced that correctly. On day 95, I had a plan to get past all the caves. The valley, if you remember, didn't seem to make wild dinos aggro towards it. So maybe if I tame a good one, I'll be able to sneak my way through caves. I wish it were a little smaller, but I have to be grateful that it's at least not the size of a giga or something. I eventually found a level 3000 valley, and so I knocked it out. There's also this long, very long creature. Apparently it's an SCP-3000 with nearly 5 million health. That's probably fine. On day 96, the valley finally tamed up. I named her Venom 2 and then teleported home. She's weak, but hopefully I'll be able to get all the artifacts, no problem. On day 97, I made grappling hooks for my crossbow, because some caves may need it. Then I started collecting the artifacts I needed. First stop, Hunter Cave. This is going to suck if I aggro any of these things in these caves. So I took my time. I managed to snatch the artifact without any difficulty. Next stop, the Center Cave. For some reason, this cave didn't have any creepy crawlies in it. It makes me wonder if the game bugged out. Well, I snatched the artifact. Let's get to the next cave, the lava cave. This one didn't have anything in it either, but I used my grappling hook and didn't know how to remove it. Turns out you have to crouch, but crouching on the controller doesn't work. So I have to press C on my keyboard, which is disobeying the rules and I'm going to punish myself. No, I'm just kidding. Anyways, I got the artifact. On to the next cave, the devourer cave. This cave had creepy crawlies in it. I decided to just take a big leap to the bottom instead of risking stepping on anything. And well, it hurt, but I'll manage. Oh, Venom too? Oh, she's fine. Then I did a big brain move to get rid of the scorpion puppy guarding the artifact. And with that being done, 
on to the next cave. Before I get into the next caves, I made some preparations. A gas mask and some scuba tanks. Okay, on to the next cave. And let me tell you, this cave sucks. I swam around in this big loop. I left here, and guess what? I returned back here. Eventually, I found the artifact, and turns out there's a tunnel that leads... Yeah, you guessed it, back here. Alright, I'm forgetting about this cave, on to the next one. There were things in this cave, but luckily they don't seem to mind me, until they did mind. I got to a ledge and was trying to get Venom 2 in a ball, but of course the game said no, so Venom 2 died. I blame this on the game, and the fact that I have to use this garbage controller. Which in reality isn't a bad controller, it just sucks for playing Ark. Well, I got my eyes on the artifact, it's just that there's a lot of things here, and they're all pretty scary. I mean, there's a Mosasaurus with over a million health for crying out loud. I walked to the other side where I'd have a better chance at nabbing this thing. I even passed some fish that were unaliving themselves. They were trying to evolve, and they found out that doesn't work. We got a good jump, good jump. Nice landing, okay. Snatched. That's fine. Um, it's fine, we can just swim. Swim away, we can't swim away. Maybe we can. Never mind, we can't. That's okay. I successfully snatched the artifact. Mission accomplished, on to the next cave. The Skylord Cave is honestly my favorite cave. Just follow the tunnels to the right and it will lead you right to the artifact. See what I did there? <laughs> right to the artifact. Never mind, next cave. On day 98, I arrived at the Swamp Cave. It took a while, but I eventually found the artifact. On to the next cave. I plan on using Ripper in the Snow Cave and just running past everything. And well, luckily there wasn't anything in there but it was freezing cold. I hate the cold in this game, honestly. The characters are such babies. Like, it's not that cold. Like, negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit, man, get over yourself. That's fine, bro. That's like, a, that's like an average day in Wisconsin, okay? On day 99, I found myself swimming through the final cave, and it was quite peaceful, because for some stupid reason, but probably understandable reason, that when you set the difficulty at a number over 800, the game starts to break. I mean, it makes sense when you think about it. Anyways, I got to the artifact room, and this place is kind of pretty when you think about it. So I snatched the artifact and teleported home. I'd say we're pretty good to go, mate. Let's do it. All right, we're here. Let's get set up. All right, everyone is set up. I think we're ready to go. All right, let's do this. I'm probably going to die. Get him, boys. How do I whistle? Right. Get him! Oh, we got this. Let's go. You going down, buddy. Came back for round two, I did. All right, well, the stinky spider lady has been uh, killed. Let's go with the monkey man. All right, we are here. Let's get set up. All right, everything is set up. Let's fight this thing. All right, here goes nothing. You know, if Armageddon doesn't make it in, I'd be really upset. Yeah, it should be fine. Let's go. Okay, pretty simple enough. If I can just back him out. Get him. Just don't fall off, please. And, wow, instantly killed. I'm losing everybody here. Okay, we're good. That was, uh, eventful. Well, I guess we're on to the next boss fight. Let's see if we survive the dragon, right? I'm not quite too sure, but who knows. Alright, we are here. Let's get set up. Who did we even lose last fight? I, I wasn't paying attention to the names. Well, I think that's everyone. Who who did we lose? Um. Oh, we lost Firewing, didn't we? Let's see. We lost Firewing, Evil Groot, Vexus, and Dom. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that makes sense, because they're not here. Duh. Well, I suppose this is the final boss. Until we're freed of our, well, you know, never-ending pain and suffering. Let's do it. If you guys made it all this way and you are still watching and you are not subscribed, it would mean the world to me if you went down below and looked at the subscribe button. Hear me out, hear me out. It, whenever, uh, supposedly, whenever I say subscribe or smash that like button, either the subscribe button or the like button will have like confetti or sparkles or it, it does a cool animation. So quickly look there. I'll say subscribe. Go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and like the video. Well, seems pretty good to me. All right, everybody, let's do this. Hopefully I don't burn to death. Luckily, you don't die as quickly in the heat as you do in the, the hot. The heat, wait, no, the cold, the hot. I'm kind of stupid. Just cross the lava, guys, it's not that hot. Um, whistling with controller sucks. 
Okay, everybody, ready? Get him. Are you guys on neutral? Don't don't trap me like this, guys. Guys, guys, get him. Guys, you you you're trapping me here. Stop it. Get away. Get him. Let me at him. Let me at him. You guys need me. Probably. Arm. Well, maybe not me, but definitely Armageddon. Yeah, he's getting shredded. Get him, boys. Wait, no, don't let him escape. Yeah, get him. Yeah, that's what's up. Hey, come back here. Stop running away. Accept your fate. Um, my toes. Oh, there goes Harry. Uh, he deserved it. Yeah, we got this. Luckily, my team is equivalent to some slightly leveled mutated Rexes, I think. I don't know. Well, guys, that has been 100 days in Ark Idiotically Challenged. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button. Subscribe if you are not already. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Peace out.